The following interview was conducted with John A. Habers, Professor Emeritus of Construction, Engineering, and Management for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, November 29, 2010 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome and good afternoon to you, Professor Habers, and thank you very much for the chance for us to have this conversation. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and siblings in early years. Well, I was born in Canada, Catherine. My father emigrated from England before World War I, and uh -huh. my mother was of Scottish descent, but living in Western Canada, and they met in Saskatchewan, okay. primarily for the purpose of having me. Okay. I was born on an Indian reservation in, uh, uh, in Saskatchewan. My father worked for the federal government in the Department of Indian Affairs. So. Okay. Uh, what was like, is that where you went to school? Did you go to grade school there on the well, uh, reservation? That's the problem. Okay. It was federal land and it was not in any school district, so oh, okay. uh, we had no school to go to. Okay. My mother homeschooled me uh, through uh, uh, many of the years. Eventually, uh, she moved, decided that uh, there'd be better that my mother would move with us to the city for the school year and they did this until I was 15 and then they wished me good luck and I was on my own. Oh dear. <laughs> no, that was fine. Oh, okay. What could you tell me um, for the researchers what was the nature of your father's uh, what, what was his role or his position there on the reservation? He was the uh, the clerk who okay. which meant that he handled the all the bookkeeping, handled the distribution of food and medicine to the Indians and Okay. And Generally handled handle the business operations. Right. Okay. Was it a uh, was it a very large reservation? Yes, it was a Crooked Lake Indian uh, reservation, which is this doesn't mean much to you, but it was uh, uh, the nearest town was uh, Broadview, and uh, it really cons each reservation consisted of. Oh, I'm sorry, each agency consisted of several reservations. Okay. And uh, the one that I was uh, born on was the Cowessus Reservation. But there, there are about three or four other reservations, and they might be scattered out over, oh, 30 miles or so. I see. Okay. Well, that, that clarifies it. Well, and at, So you went to high school, and then uh, tell us a little about uh, college and how you happened to go to the – you got your bachelor's from Saskatchewan – University, right? Yes, I okay. did. Okay. I owe my parents a great deal because from they always made it clear that my brother, I have one brother, mm -hmm. that we would both be going to university, and we were aimed that way early in life. They're great believers in books and education and so forth. Good. So I attended uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, collegiate institute in Regina and graduated from there in 1942 and then went up to the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon mm -hmm. and uh, enrolled in their engineering program. These were the uh, war years, as you'll recognize, and yes, the right. classes were very large then. Okay, okay. What was it like in the, for the wartime up there in Canada uh, for you? Did you have stamps like we had here? Food stamps, well, etc. Yes, we okay. did, and of course, my father, uh, in his capacity on the reservation, was responsible for distributing those to the uh, Indian. Uh huh. Uh, they had another thing that I'd like to see us have right now. Sure. And everyone carried an identification card, and there were no complaints about it. Okay. <laughs> with your oh. with your photo, right? <laughs> yes, all of, all, of, all of these good things. Sure, okay. It's like our driver's license today. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that fact, at that time, driver's licenses were practically unknown. At the oh, age okay. Of, at okay. the age of 14, I was happily driving around the country. <laughs> okay, sounds like my brother. Daddy gave him early lessons. <laughs> <laughs> what would your, uh, uh, tell us a little about college, uh, campus life, and what your major was. I was a civil engineering uh, student. I lived off campus for about a year, and then I uh, went into one of their residences. Uh, this particular one was a church 
sponsored one, but they ran out of theological students and had to bring in some of the heathen. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I stayed there for until I graduated in uh, 1947. Okay, sounds. I graduated with uh, with a distinction from there, which is uh, uh, recognized as a pretty good thing to do. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what was the next stage then for you after you graduated? Well, prior to graduation, I worked all the worked in the summers on various jobs. In fact, I essentially earned my own way through university, largely by doing surveying because I taught myself surveying. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I left there, I went to work for the Saskatchewan government in the Department of Highways, and uh, I stayed there for uh, a few years and. Uh, at that time, they had just begun to build the Trans-Canada Highway, and I was assigned to work on that. Oh, very good. But then they, they came up with uh, an idea of uh, providing some assistance to people who wanted to further their, uh, their education. Mm -hmm. And I was probably the first person to step up to the plate and say, I would like to do this. Uh, I checked. I'd, I was originally applied to MIT and was going to go there, but a friend of mine had uh, gone to Purdue, a place I confess I had never heard of until then. Okay. And, and there are others in the field that way, too, had done that, too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I looked into it, and mm -hmm. uh, I ended up going to Purdue and, of course, have not regretted it. Oh, right. What was it? So you came, what year did you uh, come, then, to Purdue? In the early 50s, 51, 50 or so? Yes, I, I had a, uh, a leave of absence for two semesters. I went there in the fall of 51 and got a master's degree in uh, early 1952. Uh -huh. okay. Then I, re I returned to uh, uh, to my job in, uh, in Saskatchewan and, in fact, became the head of the design division. But uh, a person that I owe a great deal of... Uh, thanks to a former head of the civil school called Ken Woods, uh, kept in touch with me. And he, I had uh, uh, taken time out and become a registered engineer while I was down in Indiana. Uh -huh. So he sent me a financial offer and said, John, come back, and uh, made me a, a, a very good offer. And I decided uh, this is something I wanted to do, I'd do it. So I ended up back there in 1953. Okay left in 1956 with oh. a, a doctorate. Okay. Were you married at that time? Yes, I uh -huh. was married uh, uh, quite early in life. Oh, okay. So you, where did, where were you living? Did you live in married student housing when you were here or? Ross Aid. Oh, okay. Working the football games there and a few extra dollars. Hey, sounds good. I know others have done that too over time. <laughs> John, John Haukes, who used to be our Cranert librarian, who's deceased now. Um, okay, now after the PhD, what came next? Did you have to serve in the military at any time, or no? Oh, you didn't? Uh, okay. I was actually as a Canadian. I was uh -huh. in the Canadian Officers Training Corps for a, few, a couple of years until I reached uh, conscription age, yeah. and then they took a look at the glasses that I was wearing and said, in effect, well, <laughs> we'll we'll equip you with a baseball bat in the if we are invaded but otherwise no thanks <laughs> keep that close at hand right <laughs> indeed okay well go ahead tell us what ha you occurred after uh, you finished your, with your got your phd well i was uh, i i wanted to go back into construction work and i interviewed several people and it was almost at the point of uh, of accepting a job on the west coast but then a person called me up and said we would like you to, to come to Hawaii. And the firm of consulting engineers, uh, planners and, arch and landscape architects by the name of Harlan Bartholomew and Associates uh, asked me to come out to work as their chief engineer. And it didn't take me very long to say, yes, I accept the job. So we went directly out to Hawaii and I stayed there until uh, oh, about 1962. Mm -hmm. we, did, we did a lot of work in the Hawaiian Islands, but I ended up in glamorous places like Pakistan and oh. India and uh, 
we did quite a bit, bit of work in uh, all Wake Island, we uh, uh, Midway Islands, places, mm -hmm. places like that. Okay, that had been affected by the war, probably. Yeah, some construction there. I see. Yeah, okay. so well, this is where the United States had all sorts of military bases, and right. we used to do a great deal of work for the Navy. Uh huh. Okay. But then this started to dry up as the uh, if the uh, if the missile range had ended up in the Pacific, I'd probably still be there. But mm -hmm. instead, they picked uh, the eastern uh, one at Canaveral, and much of the work that we did dried up. Mm -hmm. So I left that job and came back to uh, the States. Mm -hmm. Am I rambling too much? No, no, no. You're doing fine. Go ahead. I then went to work in Chicago for what was then known as the Armour Research Institute. Uh, and uh, uh, it migrated into the IIT Research uh, Institute. And I worked there as a, uh, a structural engineer. Although my, under, my graduate degree was in soil mechanics, I had a lot of structures and I wanted to work further there. Mm -hmm. So I took further courses uh, at uh, IIT while I was there, mechanics and structures, and then Living in a big city wasn't too good with respect to the education of our children. Sure. They had to uh, pretty well be bused across Chicago in order to get to a decent school because we were up in the uh, a more racially oriented part of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, an old friend of mine was then head, Jerry Lennon was then head of civil engineering he had the misfortune to also be a Canadian, but he came from Eastern Canada. <laughs> and he called me up and said, John, I need your help. And uh, at that time, now we trans, now it's much as I described in the letter. Sure. Uh, Purdue had civil engineering was cut up into areas. There was a construction area which was headed by Frank Stubbs. He was in fact, in effect, the, the construction area and he was retiring and Jerry said ask if I would come down and help them out and I said well I'll, I had been looking at some other jobs but I spoke to my wife and I said I'll come down for two years and I guess I ended up by staying 20. <laughs> it's okay. Good so move. That, that's what I did. Sure. And in all honesty, I wasn't particularly good as a professor. That wasn't my bent. But uh, I, I worked on a I worked on an academic year appointment. I refused to accept anything else, and that left me a lot of time to work as a, in consulting with uh, some mm -hmm. of the local uh, contractors. Mm -hmm. One of whom, incidentally, got a honorary doctorate from uh, Purdue, uh, Dick Demise. Okay. And then things progressed, and I'm sorry, this, most of this is in the latter. Things changed. Okay. They, they changed the organization within the CE school, broke it up into areas. Uh, I now became an area head. And the next thing was when a group of contractors based in Indiana, decided that they wanted a more specialized construction program. Mm -hmm. And they were smart enough politicians, so they went to the legislature first. And they got a pot of money there dedicated specifically to that purpose. And then that left Purdue with the job of creating something, which, uh, was, uh, uh, the, which ended up as, for a time, as the construction engineering management program until the computers at uh, Purdue couldn't handle that, and then it became the Construction Management Engineering Program. And uh, uh, we, I, I, at that time, I said I didn't want to become head of the program because I didn't want to work during the summers, mm -hmm. but that I would c contribute to it. Uh, Dean, uh, Dean Scott, Marion Scott, I don't, can't remember whether he was an associate or assistant dean at that time, was placed in nominal 
uh, charge of it, and then uh, uh, I, with considerable help from Don Hancher, started right in to create a new program. It was an interesting time because you could introduce a class, a new class, and it would be approved on the spot. Wow. But we did that rather hurriedly. Sure, to get the thing up and running. To get the thing up and ready. Sure. Right. Uh, uh-huh. okay. I had my own ideas about this program. That, uh, I uh, wanted it to be a, a quality program. I wanted it to be a national program. And uh, I wanted it to involve an inter- uh, interaction with working contractors not just in Indiana, but across the entire United States through an internship program. Uh-huh. And uh, we finally set up that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. It took a bit of a time, though, didn't it? It took a bit of a time. Sure. Every, everything was new uh, to us, and uh, we had to... I emphasized the only thing we could, that would make us succeed was being a high-quality program. Right. We couldn't compete with some of the technology programs we had to be in. We had to be an engineering program, and we had to be a management-oriented engineering program, and the curriculum was set up on this basis. Okay. Question: Were the um, with the internships, but were your the people that you were working with for, say, for the interns, were those people that were sort of involved in getting the program, getting it funded? Is no. Your, oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, excuse me. Yeah. There were several of them did. And I can okay. Name it. Bill Shuck was one. That's all right. Uh, you know, there were several of them. Sure, okay. So there was some con- continuity, but the ones that had the thought and the, and the momentum to get the thing going. We set them up as an advisory committee. Uh-huh, okay. And they all they all participated in this and worked things out. Uh, however, we did keep the deciding vote in the case of disagreement. Okay, okay, sounds good. What about faculty uh, recruitment? How talk Make a comment on that? Did you bring yes. in some new people or...? Yes, we did, and that was difficult, Catherine, because uh, the the university in Saskatchewan that I went to did have some programs which stepped outside the the uh, routine concrete, steel, earth of civil engineering, and considered such things as block construction and timber construction and so on. Mm -hmm. Purdue didn't have that and the, that talent just wasn't around. I looked for it where I could. I actually found some of it in people with architectural engineering backgrounds. Okay, yeah. And I, I wanted people, the people in our program to understand something about the electrical programs that service the things we build, the, uh, the uh, piping programs, uh, sanitary, all these things instead of simply the the concrete and the steel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I did have some success uh, in in this, but it was always a problem for us to find the people with the right uh, right qualities. In part, Catherine, because we, they recognized that they would be in a difficulty in the promotion ladder as long as we were located in a a traditional civil engineering school. I see. Okay. Okay. All righty. You were also the co-editor of that uh, handbook of heavy construction. I inherited that from Frank Stubbs. Oh, okay. Uh, where he uh, he died, and uh, well, I was there, and he sure. asked me if I would complete it, and uh, I did. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Um, could you make a couple comments about the internship, what the students uh, understand from the previous thing that you sent me? Each summer they would be doing an internship? Yes, as, as and this was intended to be a structured learning experience. We set out a three-summer uh, so program which would each summer would uh, cover a different range of experience for them, office experience, on-the-job experience, and so forth. Sure, okay. And uh, and we uh, made it clear we had very formal agreements with this, both with the students and with the sponsors, and uh, uh, we tried to, tried to keep everything at a very professional level. We had to first convince the sponsors as we moved out of from Indiana, mm-hmm. first that Indiana Indiana graduates would work elsewhere in the states, and I could point and say where this was happening. And the other was that we wouldn't 
favor Indiana contractors in assigning our students. These are both contractors are suspicious by nature, and we had to overcome those two suspicions. Okay, all right. What were some of the types of jobs that your graduates would uh, uh, go into? Well, let's see. One, mm -hmm. uh, typically, they would go to work. In some cases, they would go to, most cases, they'd go to work for uh, uh, building contractors. A thing that was totally overlooked in the original uh, construction area at Purdue was that if you take a look at where construction dollars are spent, about one-third of them went into the bridges, the roads, and so forth, and the jobs there are primarily government jobs. It's usually government jobs mm -hmm. that are available. You either work for the government or you work for a contractor that does this. Okay. But the big buddy doesn't go into that. It goes into uh, Walmarts, into Airways. The company I worked for built about six Airways in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Hyatt Hotel there we put up and things like that. Sure, okay. And a lot of work for Lilly, incidentally. Okay, okay. Uh, interesting. Um, your enrollment over time, did it increase? It, it kept... It, uh, it kept uh, no dramatic increase, okay. but uh, it uh, it continued to be a viable program. We had enthusiastic students, and we had to match two things, the number of sponsors that we had and uh, the students that were qualified to enter the program. The two of them had to match. Sure, okay. And eventually, uh, something came up there where there was urgently a, a need for uh, a full-time head. The dean talked to me. Uh, I told him that I would take I would take on the, the job of head uh, simply to save the program and uh, I would be prepared to devote a portion of my summers to it but not all of it. Okay. So we, we worked it out. Mm -hmm. So it ended up, strangely enough, I spent a good bit of this time uh, traveling around the country and talking to different contractors and selling the program, if you will. Sure. And it was successful. We did it. Right. You got to be visible, and you have to go out there. And, yes. You know, som sometimes you had to go there. That's right. Two or three times. That's right. Exactly. I can hear Paul st standing in one office in the West Coast, and this person. I said, oh, you here again? I said, you know, we're just being stubborn about this. He said, <laughs> you know this will help you, don't you? And he said, yeah, you're right. He said, it's an end. <laughs> Sit down and we'll talk about it, right? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. uh, what about your advisory committee? Did you um, start an advisory committee for the, your uh, division, for the CEM? Well, we had an advisory committee. Okay. Uh, but to be honest, it was most effective when we were formulating the program. Okay. Uh, we tried to, oh, we, we, we Catherine, we, we recognized that we were unknown. We I worked, when I took over the program, we worked very hard on becoming better known. Sure. I did all sorts of crazy things. I had stationery printed, bright, bright letterheads and so forth. I turned out stickers. Get the we, word out. Yeah, we, right. e each year we uh, we sponsored a uh, we uh, hosted a sponsors dinner at the trails, of course, and invited all of the sponsors to come there, w and to bring their interns with them. Mm -hmm. And this became a very popular thing. Oh yeah, right. That's a good idea. Yeah. Food always gets get people to, as a gathering. It does, indeed. <laughs> you people turn it down. That's right. I hear you. <laughs> well, all of this was kind of fun. Then yeah. I, I, I realized that I really had had enough of working in education. There was one other thing, if I, and I'll stop rambling here, but at that time, I took a look at things, and Purdue's computing then was based on the VAC system. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking yes, about? Indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, that was about as archaic as the buffalo. And I said, this this is not the future for computers and the use of computers until you can sit down 
with the computer on the desk in front of you and use it as a working tool as we use a used to use a slide rule, sure. we failed. And so I took one of the beauty of being head is I now had funds. And so I took funds and bought computers for each of our, uh, uh, each of our professors in CMM. And then we sent up, set up uh, all other things like a Xerox machine and these modern type things. And I said, I want you all to learn how to use them. And then uh, the, we were, we become personal friends with the Lyles uh, outfit in uh, California. They're about third generation Purdue, I think. Uh -huh. Their boy was in uh, my classes. And uh, I said that what we really needed was uh, a laboratory where we could uh, have co have computers that students could work on as a routine basis, and I was delighted that as we eventually ended up with the Lyles Baboyle computer room over in CEM. Okay, well, good. Worked out for nicely for you then. Well, it worked <laughs> out nicely for the students. That's right, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yet, uh, during your tenure here, um, I guess when you came, would Hyatt? Uh, Bill Hyatt, would he have been the dean when you first came, dean of engineering, or not? And then John Hancock, or was it John Hancock? Hancock. Okay. Hancock was the one we knew. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, of course, Coates was around and a couple of other people, and then Dr. Yang. Um, let's see. Tell us a little about fact fellow, being a faculty fellow. You know, that's changed a lot now with the um, uh, centralized dining. Most Many of the residence halls don't have the, the dining facility right in the building. Is that right? Yeah, they have the Ford Dining Center. Some do, but most of them they've got the uh, they've opened built some of the new structures, and so it's a little bit different. Ruth was a Tarkington Hall. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, I was a fact fellow at Tarkington Hall for several, for some well, years. <laughs> were you? Yeah. What? what uh, well, uh, of course, that was probably after Ruth decided to give up her career. We were and the. Uh, retire from all this uh, yeah well it's been a, I'm not a fact fellow any longer but and of course some of the things that they used to have uh, events have changed over time I think but we enjoyed it very much and you were fa a, a fact fellow then at Tarkington correct no I, I never oh. I never became a, a fact fellow oh, okay however thanks to Ruth's good offices I would always uh -huh. attend their dinners there you, you go okay tell us about family uh, do you have children and did any of them come to Purdue no. Okay. Uh, I, well, no, no to the last part. Uh, I was married, I have been married twice. Uh -huh. My first wife was, uh, uh, I was married as an undergraduate actually in Canada. Uh -huh. And on the 25th, our 25th anniversary when we were living in Lafayette, my wife uh, decided she wanted to return to Canada and I decided I didn't. Okay. I have. Let's see, I have two daughters and a stepdaughter from that marriage, and mm -hmm. then with Ruth endowed me with uh, four more children. Oh, so nice. We, yes, wasn't that nice? Very good, yes. And you say all, she, of, you all of her children went to Purdue. Okay, you say that she was she was involved with the residence halls. What, what residence hall did you work in? Packington. She was food oh, manager okay. there. Oh, okay, okay, all righty. And uh, let's see, uh, one of her sons uh, went so he eventually got a master's in electrical at uh, Purdue, uh -huh. and he works for Oracle in the West Coast and has done very well. Uh -huh. And uh, one, another one uh, got a bac baccalaureate degree in industrial management that went on down to Indianapolis and got a, an, an MBA degree, and he now works for Lilly. Okay. One of her daughters went through uh, the nursing program with some prodding from her mother, and uh, she went out at what was then the state soldier's home. Sure. And she, event she eventually became the director of nursing there, for, stayed there for many years, and retired about two years ago. Okay. And the, the other daughter took the easy way out and got married <laughs> okay. to an Ohio State engineering professor oh dear okay <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, archives and special collections I wanted to mention again for the researchers about the slide rule collection that's there and one of them 
is yours, and it's in Box 2, Folder 33. So when you look on the website for archives in the slide, you'll see it. You scroll down, and you'll see that listed, your Box 2, Folder 33. <laughs> Think of all the patient uh, carving that I did on that case. Oh, I bet, right. At, at that <laughs> time, at that time, there was uh, the war years. There was a, it was very difficult to get a slide rule. Oh, okay. And when they uh, went on sale, everybody would rush to the university bookstore. And I'm talking now the University of Saskatchewan sure. bookstore. Sure. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, awards and honors, you remember, you remember, you have honoraries in Tau Beta Pi and Sigma Chi and Chi Epsilon. Yes. Okay. And uh, you're a member of the American Society of Civil Engineers. Do you still no, keep involved uh, in that? No, I, I, I'm not involved in that anymore. Okay. When I retired from, I, I dropped most of those. Sure. Things. Okay. Just keep it. Sometimes people keep on just to keep the newsletter coming, you know. But you well, the trouble, trouble is I kept getting a lot of magazines <laughs> that I really wasn't reading. <laughs> exactly. Uh, tell us about retirement activities. What uh, after post for due? Oh, well, I, I went in heavily for duplicate bridge, which, of course, I've always played bridge, but now I joined, joined ACBL and used to play about seven days a week. Oh, my goodness. My wife, uh, I talked her into doing this, too, and we traveled around the uh, playing tournaments for quite a while uh -huh. until uh, one day she decided that I was being a little bit too determined about all this and that uh, uh, there was a little too much pressure, so she dropped out of it. Uh -huh. And uh, we've, over the years, we've traveled a lot. We uh, have, for many years, we had an Airstream trailer, and uh, in fact, I used to use that when I traveled for... Purdue University on the CEM program. Sure. Instead of living in the hotels, we just took the trailer with us. Mm -hmm. And we've covered almost every place you can think of in Canada and the States. Mm -hmm. And then we've, uh, my wife had a, my present wife uh, uh, had a long de deferred wish to travel. And I think in an expansive mood, expansive mood I once said, uh, marry me and I'll show you the world, and she took it quite <laughs> literally. <laughs> so there, there are a few things we haven't done. In fact, we took one cruise up the uh, Danube River, and the uh, Purdue president and his wife uh, were there as well. Oh, what was that, Dr. Baring or Dr. Chesky? Neither one. Oh, okay. okay. This, this was the one that was touted as a grand romance, where the president uh, married his for his oh dr hansen art hansen would have been president hansen i thought it was hancock but oh, maybe it, okay uh, may, no i guess it is hansen okay but professor or, uh, dr hansen has since passed away this uh, summer mm -hmm. he did right and they had a memorial service here they uh you know the little cemetery that's next to westwood which is the president's home yep the, yes. up there that's where he's buried oh ah, yeah right and she's also nancy has Second wife is, is was deceased is buried there also and then he married again and um, she uh, they've been living in Florida they live down in Naples but he's passed away in July of this year. People have a habit of doing that. <laughs> uh, anything that I that you'd like that I forgot to ask or in summary I'm going to leave it up to you. Uh, no. Anything no, I, closing? I, I recognize I rambled. Uh, no, I think you're. I think you're doing very well, and it's I appreciate the, that letter. is very nice. You know, good. it's very nice, very helpful. It'll be a little bit of a time before we'll send the transcript to you for you to look it over because we don't put anything up on our website until the re, uh, interviewee has looked at the transcript. Okay, okay, I already independently signed and sent you the. Uh, That's fine. Okay. And okay. I will send you the other one that we're giving it to the archives. We have a new facility. Uh, we used to be on the second floor of Stewart Center 279 in about a year, well, it's been almost two years now. Uh, we moved to the, in the Hissey Library up on the fourth floor. Uh, they renovated that, and that's where the archives and special collections is very nice. A nice was, exhibit I, area. I, was, I went on campus and, uh, this last trip, and I was impressed. Oh, good. Purdue, Purdue keeps on building and building and building. That's not right. As That's not right. as fast as they once did, but... Yeah, we got quite a few. It's going to change a lot since I've been here. <laughs> they made some significant changes, further changes to 
the, what I still view as the new civil engineering building, too. Okay, okay. Well, that brings up, and in closing, I want to thank you, but I would, uh, if you and your wife, next time you're coming, let me know in advance, and I'd be pleased to host you for lunch and then give you a little tour of the archives and special collections. Well, that's very kind so of you. So just keep it in mind. If it's convenient, we'll be glad to do it. I don't. I That's don't. Okay. I don't. If I would li like to accept this, I, sure. but I don't. If my wife's health will permit it. Okay. We did make this one trip, but we have a feeling it might have been. Okay. The That's last all right. One. But you can keep it in mind because it's always open-ended. Okay. Then. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much, Dr. Habers, and my best wishes to you and your wife for a wonderful holiday. Well, thank you, and it's been a pleasure chatting okay. with you. Thanks again. Bye-bye. <clears throat>